We're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time where we go through the papers this morning and uh, we call it off the press. Usually an exciting time. And Ginny Johnson will be with us making sense of the papers, especially the headlines on the front pages. Ginny, uh, compliment of the season and thanks for joining us. Same to you and compliment of the season to all our viewers all over the world. Wish them Merry Christmas in advance and Happy New Year also in advance and bringing them greetings from Kaduna. Oh, that's great. You're probably close to the Chief of Defense staff or the Chief of Army staff, I beg your pardon. <laughs> you, you better yeah. be careful so you're not arrested, you know, with him as well. Uh, 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 well, um, I'm not too sure that the civil courts can handle that. That will be done by the, that will be done by the military, military hierarchy. There is a procedure in which um, issue relating to discipline of the military is done. I think they have their own judicial process and I think the matter should be referred to them and then but he is the head of the is the head of the army. So who questions him? Oh, we'll get the to that point. So, well, let's start off with the nation. It talks about the federal government. We supported states with 5.03 trillion in seven years. And that's boldly written on the nation newspaper. Nigeria not broke, not defaulting in debt repayment. We're trying to reduce poverty, says state. Now, this is a response to, you know, the, uh, for the question by the federal government where they said, you know, state government or state governors are responsible for, you know, the poverty that we're experiencing. And you also have to bear in mind the recent statistics where those who are poor, about 72% are from rural community. How do you respond? Now, when you look at the, 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 the issue of poverty, that has to do with the structure of government that we have. The bulk of the resources goes to the federal government um, and then none of the resources goes to the local government because what is allocated to the local government is is not disbursed to them by the local go by the state government because of the joint account system and then you knew when the president came up with the um, executive order 10 to bring about autonomy into the local government the state governments resisted and you compare the number of power centers you have 776 power centers at the local level that this is power center at the state level and one power center at the federal level and the bulk of the resources goes to the power center at the at the state and at the federal level so the local government is left behind and like you pointed out it's not even 72 percent over 80 percent of the population lives in the rural area and these rural areas do not have access to basic infrastructure and when you see governors doing their projects they do their projects in major cosmopolitan area of their state in major cosmopolitan area of the state. Let me throw a shot. Let me fire a shot. Now let's go to River State, for example. Or um, 90%, or if not 95% of the projects that we have seen that Wiki has showcased are in Port Accord. Like a friend, a colleague said, he said, well, you, you can point to that, that Port Accord is a one, is a one city state. And then if you come to some other states too, you begin to see that, that the concentration is in the capital city. And then probably major major towns, we realize the rural areas are disconnected. And these are the things that the governors will showcase. In the past, when the first republic, the second republic, you see the integrated connection of road networks in Nigeria. Some, if you are still going through Ijebu to Ibadan, Ijebu go to Ibadan, you go through routes that were constructed in the in the first republic. In the first republic, the roads are still there. Some, some communities will have remained detached from Nigeria, even not for the First Republic. So if you are not taking constructive effort to connect the rural areas to the urban areas, then we have this poverty, poverty, poverty problem. And don't forget that, with the exception of oil, Nigeria is still a major agrarian society. 80, close to about 80% of the labor in this country are employed in the agricultural sector of the economy. And in this agricultural sector of the economy, they are mostly in the rural areas. If not for oil, a lot of things will have, will have, will have, will have, will have, will have, will have gone wrong in this country. So I agree that the states need to do more, the local governments need to do more. And 
we need to we need to detach the local government from the state government and then we need to also look at in fact the bulk of the resources should go to the local government because everybody identifies with their local government not with their state of origin not when we want to vote we go back to our respective local government to our respective units not even the state so if we don't do something about this mercy i, I can assure you there's no mercy with respect to this poverty problem all right so what um we understand that that's very important how can the state uh, i mean the local government function properly in terms of her natural yeah. How can that function properly? How can we get the third tier of uh, government to function properly, just as you have the state and the federal government? Whose responsibility, whose responsibility is it that it should be um, granted that autonomy well, and function need, independently of everybody? Make, well, we need to make the constitutional provisions for. Unfortunately, the 1999 constitution as amended did not make any provisions for the local government. It made the local government to be an extension of the state government. As a result, some states have not conducted local government election after it was first. Otherwise, it was conducted to 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 kickstart the Fourth Republic in 1998. So, uh, well, the the Ninth Assembly had made the provisions in terms of their in terms of their constitutional review. You you have also seen that some states to the influence of their governor, have rejected this constitutional amendment to make the local government a third tier of government independent of the state of the of the state of the state government. Hopefully, 24 states out of the 36 will pass this amendment and it will become it will become part and parcel of the constitution. The local government will be constitutionally recognized as a tier of government in Nigeria. That's the solution to the problem. Otherwise, if we still have what we have, if you check the story, one of the stories in the one of the newspaper where the, where I think where the president complained about states taking funds that belong to local government. We continue to have this type of situation in this in this country. Well, we we know that during the constitutional, uh, we, we need to talk about this because it's very important. And if you look at our rural communities or rural areas, they are underdeveloped. There seem to be a lot of concentration on the you know urban centers and what have you although these are also villages, but however, uh, rural communities are underdeveloped. Now, so far, there was a, a bill that was voted for. Now, out of 36, only 20 voted for during the, um, you know, constitutional amendment process for financial autonomy. States like Lagos, Ekiti, Benue State rejected, you know, were not in support for financial autonomy. And we understand the impact or the importance of, you know, being in control of money. So finance or... Uh, funds very critical in development. So you can imagine states like Lagos, states like Lagos, and they will be bringing out their chest to see that um, they are progressive in nature, they support restructuring and what have you. Don't forget, the Lagos State House of Assembly just exists on paper. It's an extension of the governor's office. The governor's office is an extension of an office in Ikui. So. If you are, if you are, so if the principal in the Koyi does not support what was meant to be done with respect to, well, these are people that have no respect for local government in the first instance. Because if you check, it's my state, I can talk about my state authoritatively. And I've argued this over and over and over and over time again. Now, that if we don't put the local government in place, the development does not come from the top, development grows from bottom up. And in that situation, the, the closest government to the people is the local government. And if you don't give such government autonomy, because they want to have control over, over the local government, local government. We all knew what happens in all of these local government. States dip their hand into the pockets of the local government, or they ask them to contribute money. You can you can send your reporter or any journalist to go and investigate. I can tell you that of Lagos authority. The local government, what they do in the local government, states dip their hand into the accounts of the local government, or they ask them, they give them command to contribute 10, 10 million. So imagine if 57, if 57, if 57 local government and LCDs should contribute 10, 10 million monthly. You know what it amounts to. So this is the reason why some of these principal actors don't want local government to have their independent autonomy. And some of us have argued that we need to take local government election away from CIEC and make INEC to conduct the election. There are many states in the country that did not conduct 
that have not conducted elections into the local government, appointing sole administrator, which is antithetical to democratic principle and democratic value. At the local level, you have sole administrator. At the state level, you have elected representative. At the federal level, you have, you have elected representative. Then you, you discover that something is wrong. And if something is wrong with the base, the, the, critical, the critical element of any building is the foundation. And the foundation of public governance is the local government. If something is wrong with that base of government, then something will be totally wrong. So you can imagine if states like Lagos, if principal actors in Lagos uh, did not support local government autonomy, did not support financial autonomy, then what do you expect will happen when they have access to power at the national level? Then local government will cease to exist. Uh, let's move away from that, but uh, still uh, some connection with the issue of the local government. On the Punch newspaper, uh, President Mohamed Buhari says that local government, um, of course, governors are stealing uh, local government funds. That's what the president is saying. And you can also want to say that that might just also be responsible for the underdevelopment. That, now, the question would be, uh, are these governors above the law? I mean, what exactly can be done to contain this impunity? How do we check all of these excesses? Is there a way to ensure that justice is meted? Mercy. One, the Constitution created a joint account for the local government. Local government cannot receive their, their funds directly. It goes into its joint account. And because the Constitution does not even recognize the local government as a third tier of government, you are just listed. There were no constitutional provisions with respect to how they have, they, the, 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 the government at that level is structured. So if you look at all over Nigeria, there's no uniformity in terms of structure. I am passionate about local government because I knew that if we really want development, nobody, an American does not care who becomes the governor. What is interested is, is the mayor of a city. Same in Britain, people look at the councillors the councillors, their mayor, these are powerful people. Mayor of Washington, D.C. is more powerful than the president of the United States of America. That was that became clear. When we used to see it, people used to think, oh, it is not possible. That became clear on January 6th with respect to who has control. Or that became clear during COVID with respect to who can impose COVID, COVID restriction or no COVID restriction in Washington, D.C., where is the capital of the United States of America. So we need to understand this fact that the local government is critical and central to development. However, the 1999 constitution did not provide a structure as to how elections are conducted into the local government, as to what will be the structure of the local government, as to what will be the tenor of the local government. As a result of that, we have a lopsided arrangement. We have in some states where they have not conducted local government elections since the after 1998, the first, 1998, we have uniform local government election in December 1998 to start the Fourth Republic. So we have not done anything. And then you recall that the first attempt for us to have a uniform local, local government structure was in 1976, when the Obasanjo Mutala administration set up the Dasuki panel. The Dasuki panel provided a template which created a uniform local government across the nation. Then in 1991, during the botched Third Republic, Babangida came up with Decree 10, Decree 10, which provided presidentialism for, for, as a structure for local government. I will tell you that that period was the golden era of local government in, 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 in Nigeria. I can specifically talk about local government chairman in Lagos and talk about projects which they've done. That's when you talk about William Kinudi of, of, of Moshin local government, Prince Ademola Adeniji of Lagos Island local government, uh, uh, Ajaguno of Agigi local government, Odebumi of Ikeja local government, and later um, when when um, Alimosho local government was created, he moved to Alimosho local government. So we can go on and on and on and on. And I can tell you that you can point to legacy projects that were done by this local government at this particular point in time. After that, the local government are just an extension. 
You have people that are not even elected, they are appointed. The primaries are not done. They just, you just impose different types of character to be the local government. In fact, if you do a comprehensive analysis of Lagos State local government since 1999 to date, you see the chalad in which they call administration at the local government level. I can say for a fact for my local government, and I can say for a fact for any local government, the, 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 the spokesperson to the governor can come to TV program with me and let us argue that, or the 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 publicity secretary of APC can come to TV and let's argue that to talk about local government administration in Lagos State since 1999 to date, and we talk about it, and then if if they are bold enough to come and let us talk about do, it, do, do, whether do, indeed we have, hmm. whether, whether indeed we have a democratic structure or a proper structure at the local government at the state level in a flagship state like Lagos State, for example. Well. Uh, we can only continue to wonder and ponder what will be the way out. Unfortunately, there are a lot of lacunas with the Constitution. And uh, we probably might continue in this circle until, I don't know. Well, when, well when if there is that lacuna, those that claim to be progressive, those that claim to be progressive should be able to set, to set the ball rolling. They should be able to set examples. They should be able to set examples, provide leadership and direction. I believe that um, they will be able to provide leadership and direction with respect to how things should be done since it's the is a bastion of democracy and is the base of the progressive ideology as they claim All but right. talk is action is is the real deal i, I remember you know owning a, a t-shirt like that talk is cheap <laughs> well on the punch newspaper politicians behind attacks on INEC facilities that's what jaga is saying who are these politicians now very interesting also is that, uh, you know, there's also a warning from NAS saying stop using thoughts. NAS wants governors. Who are these governors? Who are these politicians? How come they have not been apprehended? If we know the people who are causing all of the mayhem, are they above the law? Why haven't they, they been arrested? What is the law? What's going on with the law? And, uh, you know, justice taking its place. Mercy. I'm not a prophet of doom, neither am I a suitsier. But I can tell you that there's a need for INEC to be for to work with security agencies to ensure that they protect their infrastructure. Now the elections in Ekiti and the elections in Oshun State has shown clear to every to the political class that this is no longer business as usual. The, the introduction of beavers has taken away, has, has, has reduced the capacity of the political class to manipulate the process by over 90%. By over 90%, it has, it, has, it, has, it has reduced that. So no longer can anybody sit in one place and write the result because as soon as the elections are conducted, the results are uploaded. And you have seen various attempts by major stakeholders to discredit that process. To talk about Nigeria not having the capacity to do that. I am here in Kaduna, you are in Lagos, and we are doing this program there in Lagos. Now, and everybody all over the world, they are watching this program. So you, you, you discover that these people would make, who are those that are stakeholders in the political process? Who are those that the system will benefit or will not benefit? Who are those that the new system is threatening. It is those that feel threatened by the new system that want to destroy the structure that has been put in place. Why would the same person, why would someone that does not have support think in his rightful mind to go and set ablaze INEC offices? It's to make it practically impossible for INEC to, to, to deploy technology in this election. And you know, when you deploy this technology, you reduce the capacity of human involvement in the system. And then when you reduce the capacity of human involvement in the system, you reduce the level of manipulation that can be brought to bear on the system. So they are not comfortable with this system. And that's why we have said it. I give you an example. I give you an example. I, I, I threw a shot at my state. Let me throw a shot at another state. Do you know the reason why some governors are appointing 100,000, 200,000 aides? They are not appointing those aides because they want them to be advisor. They want they are appointing them because of electoral purposes. And I give you, I give you class class. Now, if you have two hundred thousand aides, you promise them, you give them money. 
and then you promise them to be your advisor, 200,000 each, if they're able to convince five people to vote for your party, that's one million. You already have one million in the bag. In the past, you could sit in one place and write and write the result and write one million and whatever. you. Check the results. These people don't go back to results. Check the result of 2019 election. Compare 2019 election with 2015 election. Compare 2015 election with 2011 election. Compare 2011 election with Jude 2007 elections. And look, and look at the result. Look at the trend. There's what we call trend analysis. Look at the trend. Look at the figures. Do a statistical analysis. And you see the skewness of, 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 of the voting pattern and then of, of, of voters turnout. Then you'll be shocked that to a large extent, some of the claims that we have in terms of the number of voters registered and the number of people that actually come out to vote. The last election, the president didn't get more than, there were, there were less than 30 million Nigerians that voted. The president didn't get, but we have voted in, in, in 2007, yeah, do I poll 22 million votes. In 2011, I can't recall now, I don't have the figure of, uh, we need the number of votes Jonathan polled. So, invariably, the political class knew that they can't call for the form EC8 again and look for the form EC8 and sit in one place and write the result. Like so, it was so done. My, my, my concern is, and it's also a concern of a lot of Nigerians, why these persons who are enemy of the states, I mean, politicians who are responsible for the attack on INEC facility, that translates to, you know, truncating the democratic process or an election. These are real enemies. Why haven't they been arrested? Who are these persons? I mean, are they really above the law? If we know them, what's going on? That's the point. Who are these governors? Who are these politicians? And so because it seems like we know these persons, but we, we seem to be helpless. Fingers or our hands are folded or crossed, and then we're, we can't really do anything. Unfortunately, that, that should come from the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation. Unfortunately, and then we have an Attorney General of the Federation. It's the job of the Attorney General of the Federation. And history will put the Attorney General of the Federation in his rightful place with respect to what he was able to do with the dispensation and administration of justice in Nigeria. Now, we have seen a lot of infractions, and nothing has been done. And since 1999 today, this is the first time we have had an Attorney General of the Federation in the first time and the second time of a sitting president. We have, this is the longest time we have had a single person occupying that office. And at the same time, you have not seen critical issues being done with respect to administration and dispensation of justice. Like I pointed out, and like I've said, history will put the Attorney General in the right perspective when he's at the end of his tenure with respect to what he's able to do and what he's not able to do with, with, with that. We have a situation in Imo State in the last election whereby the, the election result was declared under duress, a gun was pointed on the head of the uh, of the returning officer to declare the result. Till date, the the, the 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 beneficiary of that process is still a sitting is still a sitting senator. You know who I'm talking about? The governor of status that you, that loves meeting status. That is a that is a present senator in the present in the, in the present. Of, so we lack the political will, the political will to prosecute. People that have committed infractions. Now, the, the we must uphold the constitution. We must abide by the principle of rule of law. We talk about the equality before the law. Now, if we don't enforce our laws, people will continue to break the law with impunity. There is nobody that is above the law. Okay, if the governors are are, are, are protected by immunity, are those they sent out to do these things protected by immunity? But you know what happens. We rather prosecute people. We rather prosecute people that insult or allegedly insult people in authority. We have a classic case of a boy, young boy that has been arrested with respect to his post on Twitter. We have a classic case of a, of a former student of mine. We are still on that matter that has been arrested in in, in Taraba State, in Taraba State because of. A publication, his publication in Taraba State and his radio station in Taraba State used what mainstream media used in their reports. And then he was he was he was charged to court by the state, spared by the attorney general, and taken to court mm. and is still in, 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 in detention till date. All right, Judy so Johnson. I'm talking about Samuel. So in, in, invariably it's, it's easier 
for 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 the attorney generals or for for those that should enforce the law to to quickly prosecute um, um, individuals who they think that are one a threat to 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 the state or a threat to their interest or the political interest that to prosecute people that are actually committing crimes against the state destroying democratic principles and democratic values. Let's quickly share your thoughts on this. It's on the Daily Trust. Very interesting headline. Nigeria needs no debt relief. That's what the finance minister is quoted to say as federal government releases 5.03 trillion naira, $3.4 billion to states in seven years. Uh, we're doing very well, despite the fact that we're owing so much. Uh, Nigeria's debt stock is at 42.8 trillion as of June. That's according to a report from DMO. Uh, that, Ghana's debt crisis. Another, another minister you need that um, a scorecard will be very, very clear after she, she leaves office is the Minister of Finance. She took, she took over from Kemi Adiyoshu and she's been one of the longest uh, Minister of Finance that we have also had in this country. It is interesting for her to see that. That's why the fact that Nigeria needs that no debt relief. And then under her under, under, under watch, Nigeria has, has, has collected, has committed to a lot of a lot of a lot of loans a lot of we have committed to a lot of loans foreign loans that has that has imposed everybody in, in terms of foreign debts on nigeria so you, you could see that it, someone that should patent a monetary policy that should patent nigerian collecting loans for many projects and at the same time see nigeria does not need um, debt, debt, debt relief all of these characters i've said it and i'll say it loud and clear it's just a matter of time and what does type says? Time is to put them in the rightful place they belong to, because she's in charge of the monetary policy, of of of, uh, uh, and she's in charge of the fiscal policy rather, the fiscal policy of the country, and then how 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 fiscal discipline has Nigerian been in with respect to balancing our budget, with respect to our our foreign debts and our foreign loans, with respect to our 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 our, our, our foreign reserves. So. They, they just, these people, they are just characters that just think that they can just use the platform of the media to talk, to, to spew out whatever comes to their mind to Nigerians, thinking that Nigerians do not have a thinking camp to put, to, to put on. In, 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 in what way has our policy helped, helped, helped Nigerian, Nigerians grow domestic growth? In what way has our policy as a finance minister helped to reduce the inflation that we have. In what way has it reduced the commodity price that we have? Jide, and then Nigeria does not need. Last quickly, we, we, we're it. we have to cost it yeah. down now, but uh, this has to be on the issue because uh, a lot of Nigerians are going through uh, a, a difficult time. This is festive period. We've already started 2nd of December and people are expected to travel you know, from one point to the other, getting to work. Going about the day's business has been almost difficult. Right, but um, here on the punch, fuel queues grow longer after the federal government's sufficiency claim of over 2 billion liters of petrol, you know, that can take the country for about 34 days, 30 days, if you like. Uh, but I'd like to ask, is there fuel scarcity where you are? There's fuel scarcity all over right here. Yes, I had to allow one of my team members to go yesterday. Either for him to go yesterday to go and fill this car, or for him to come late this morning. Um, to after going to fill his car with 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 PMS, so we had to allow him to go. So there's first cast over Nigeria, and then you know the style, you know the template. Mm. So you know the template of, of how systematically the pump prices of petroleum products are increased in Nigeria. We know, you know the style. You know the style of how it has happened under this present administration. There were the same set of people in 2011 that went to 2011-2012 that went to Georgia to protest the pump prices of petroleum product. The same set of people moved this from 97 to one. 21 or something from 121 and then you see let's talk about 145 it was when he moved to 145 that there was there were there was some measure of protest where is nsc in all of this have you seen nsc have you had any statement from organized labor have you had anything from nlc with respect to what is going on the hardship that nigerians are going through and then the prices they are paying for this petroleum 
petroleum petroleum products and then you have the president as the minister of petroleum and then you have a minister of state and then you have no statement from NNPC and the rest of them so as far as i'm concerned this is just an hour to increase the the pump prices of petroleum products and what can we do they've discovered they've tried it over time and they discovered that nigerians resilience is, is is weak when it comes to when it comes to getting getting fuel they will use whatever means they have to get the fuel life continues and so to continue to use this particular approach because nobody is taking responsibility nobody is taking responsibility for this untold hardship that we are going through nobody 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 is taking responsibility all right and you can imagine that nigeria is a major oil producing uh -huh. country and we are suffering well, Gideon, we have to go now. Uh, I'm sure that we can have this conversation some other time. We do appreciate your uh, thoughts this morning. Quite interesting on some of these issues. We look forward to sharing your thoughts as we proceed in 2022. Merci. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. And um, Merry Christmas once again. Merry Christmas to you. I had well, that's the size of Off the Press this morning. On the breakfast, we take a break and when we return, we'll be looking at the first major conversation. Please stay with us.